So everyone, we are having our next session on OCPP 2.01 or 2.1. Um, we have the Operational Director of Open Charge Alliance with us, Lonneke Driesen. She will tell us more about the newest features here. Um, so, up to you. Thank you. So, um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lonneke Driesen and I'm uh, the Director of the Open Charge Alliance. And I have prepared for you a little bit of background about the Open Charge Alliance, but mainly focus on the new version of OCPP. It's a draft. Um, and what's included. So if you've already impl implemented OCPP, you will learn after this presentation what more you can do with OCPP. So first of all, the Open Charge Alliance is a non-profit organization uh, from the Netherlands. We were founded back in 2014. So this year we celebrate our 10th anniversary. Um, we are a membership organization. We have 378 members. You don't have to be a member of the Open Charge Alliance to use OCPP, of course. You can just use it, download it, and it's all for free. There is no intellectual property in OCPP. There's no license fees in OCPP. The only thing that's protected is the name. There's only one OCPP. And of course, OCPP is very simple. It just describes the information exchange between a charging station and the back office. That's the only part that the OCP protocol covers. Um, the Open Charge Alliance does three different things. So first of all, we promote OCPP. So the presentation of today is, uh, is an example of that. We develop a testing tool and we offer a certification program uh, where you can certify your, your charging station or your back office uh, for conformance. And around us you see a couple of parties who are very proudly sharing their OCPP certified logo. Um, and the last but most important thing we do is we develop the protocol OCPP. It is an agile protocol, meaning that we incorporate the needs of the industry and then we release it. Everybody starts using it and informs us that they need uh, modifications or new features and we implement those as, well, those as well when we publish a new version. So there are several versions of the protocol that you can use and I will go more into detail uh, about the most recent one. So very briefly, all the information you can find on our website, the protocol itself of course, but also white papers and information about, information about events. So if you go to the website, you, can, uh, you should be able to find anything uh, you need to know. And if not, you can always reach out and contact us. OCPP started already 15 years ago. And this was in 2009 uh, at a company called ELATNL, uh, which is an organization founded by the Dutch grid operators. They wanted to install charging infrastructure and back in those days, in 2009, there was hardly anything available, so they decided to start writing a protocol themselves, OCPP first versions. And from the beginning, that protocol was free on the internet and you could just use it. And that's one of the reasons why it was so popular back then, that there was not a lot of money to be made in EV charging infrastructure, so anything that was for free was uh, okay. So a lot of people started using it and at a point in time ELAT decided that it would be better to hand over OCPP to a neutral organization, an independent organization, and that's why they founded the Open Charge Alliance in 2014. So this year we have our 10th anniversary, we have a big party uh, in uh, October, so please keep, keep an eye uh, out for that. In 2015, so already nine years ago, we published OCPP 1.6. And this is a version that's most widely used at the moment. So most uh, companies that use OCPP use OCPP 1.6. Uh, it's a good protocol, it still works. We, have, we do still maintain it. We have a certification program, a testing tool, plug fest, white papers. So 1.6 is per perfectly usable, but it does have the features that were defined in 2015. So nine years ago. So the industry has progressed enormously. And I think this conference is a great example of that, where we are today. Uh, so the industry also has requirements, more needs today, which were not uh, known or discussed nine years ago. So that's why in 2020, we released OCPP 2.0.1, the most recent published version of OCPP. And we are about to publish 2.1. And in this presentation, I will give you more information on what is extra in 2.1 as compared to 2.0.1. 
So I mentioned already that um, some vendors or most vendors have OSPP 1.6 and I can imagine you thinking, oh god, another protocol. <laughs> I've just finished my 1.6 implementation and I'll have to code 201 or even 2.1. So nowadays there are more options uh, for you uh, to choose from. So first of all, what you always can do is just code the software yourself. A lot of companies do this. But in addition, you can also buy already certified software stacks. So a ready-made stack, of course, that's a great advantage. You know that it works and you'll get the support. And your third great option you have, you can uh, use open source. So you can use open source code as a basis for your implementation. So you have uh, much more options today than you used to 10 years ago if you want to move forward with any of the newer versions of the protocol OSPP. So I mentioned this year we are finalizing OSPP 2.1. It's a draft. This slide may be a bit too detailed for you to see, but um, what's important for you to note that as of today, the draft version of OSPP 2.1 is available as a public draft. Uh, usually drafts are only available for OCM members and if you're not an OCM member you don't have access to the new versions uh, until it gets published. But for 2.1 we have uh, uh, opened for a public review. So as of today if you go to the OCA website you can download the 2.1 draft. You can already read it and see what's included. Uh, and if you're missing something or if, if you have some comments you can uh, share those uh, review comments uh, with us. We hope you do. Um, because then we can incorporate it before we publish the final version of OCPP 2.1. So if you're an OCM member, you probably are already familiar with what's new in 2.1. If you're not an OCM member and you'd like to share your feedback, please uh, download the draft version and, and upload your comments. The public review is 60 days, so you have two months, which is not that long, but uh, we hope that you uh, can find some time to review it. And now to the content, it's uh, quite detailed uh, and I hope you'll bear with me, but um, what you may know if you've read the specification OCPP 201, it's divided by letters, so A, B, C, D and all those parts. And step by step I will walk you through, through the different uh, profiles of the specification and what has been added in 2.1 as opposed to 201 and what has been updated. So uh, everybody take out their notebooks uh, because class is starting. So first of all, if you look at part A of the 201 specification, that's, called, that's the part that covers security. And in the 2.1 specification, there's nothing that's been added that's new. Only one thing that's been updated is the charging station certificate request. And that, of course, has to do with ISO-20. The OCPP 201 specification addresses ISO-1511-2 and the 2.1 specification addresses dash 20. So the only thing for security we've updated in 2.1 relates to the implementation of ISO dash 20. If you don't use ISO dash 20, of course, you don't need to implement this. Second part is uh, the provisioning, only a small new uh, use, co use case added. So what if you reset while you're uh, in the middle of a transaction, something that was uh, lacking uh, uh, in 2.0.1. The big part that has been added to the section C in 2.1 is authorization and it has mainly to do with payment terminals. In the 2.01 specification we do not explicitly specify how to work with payment terminals um, and particularly with AFIR, so the European regulation where all chargers uh, above a certain power level must have a payment terminal. Um, that's why our members ask us to include OCPP messages for that purpose. So that's what we've added. If you have a charging station that doesn't have a payment terminal, of course, you'll forget, you can forget about all these additions in 2.1. Um, and again, we for the authorization parts, the parts that reflect on ISO-20 have also been updated. Local authorization list is something from the past, it's still there, but uh, no updates uh, in 2.1, so it's still exactly the same. And for transactions, again, what we've added is um, for prepaid cards, so it's on sometimes if you want to pay, there's a prepaid, uh, prepaid amount, so that has been added. And uh, an important, or maybe not so for many industries, but something that's important for Southeast Asia is battery swapping. 
I know uh, many of you who have been in the industry for quite some time remember battery swamping for passenger cars. Uh, that's not very prominent at the moment, but for two-wheeler and three-wheelers, so like scooters and tuk-tuks, there are some companies who are again looking at battery swapping for those kinds of applications. So that's the type of battery swapping that we wanted to address in 2.1. So if you're using battery swapping for two and three wheelers, uh, we have implemented uh, use cases for that. Again, if you don't work with battery swapping, you can forget about that. And you don't have to look at it. Then remote control. Uh, we included a remote start for a fixed uh, cost, energy or time. Same, same thing about prepaid. Availability and reservations, no changes at all, so still the same as 201. Uh, tariff and cost, um, what's there? So you maybe, to summarize, there's a lot about payment and tariff and cost. That's something that's uh, been added in 2.1 particularly. And lastly, for meter values, um, there is an addition in 2.1 that you don't have to send uh, meter values uh, quite frequently. It's very much detailed, so if you read the specification, or maybe you afterwards you can come and ask us, we can explain to you there a small change there. And then the big part. So the big part that has been updated in 2.1 is smart charging. And you can see here, of course, the ISO 1511-20 is part of the profile K. Um, what we also improved, which is not that sophisticated in 201, is how does the charging station react if, in addition to management by a CPO, there is also a local energy management system that also controls the charging uh, speed on site. 201 doesn't really describe this, so we've tried in 2.1 make it more explicit. So the communication to the energy management system is not OCPP, it could be anything, could be eBus, could be Matter, could be Botbus, could be Econet Light, doesn't matter. But how does a charging station communicate to the back office when that happens? So there's two masters telling the charging station what to do and what should the charging station do. So that's a big uh, part. Um, and also uh, updates regarding ISO-20, as I already mentioned. Firmware management, nothing new. ISO-2, of course, we've added in that part uh, what you need for Dash-20. Uh, diagnostics, some improvements that were introduced by the uh, first few members that are using uh, the device model, basically, in 201. Display message, small improvement to use to, to also facilitate multi-language support. And then the two big blocks, which are totally new, which were not available in 201. And those are bi-directional power transfer, V2X, V2G, whatever you like to call it. And accompanying that, the DER control, which stands for Distributed Energy Resource Control, which is... Um, of particular importance to all of us, but it comes from utilities. When you feed back into the electricity grid, utilities view you as a distributed energy resource. And of course, traditionally, that has been wind farms, solar farms, big batteries. But also, when vehicles start producing energy and pushing energy back into the grid, one vehicle doesn't make a difference. 100 vehicles will not make a difference. But if you go to large scale, feeding into the grid from, from, from vehicles, then utilities start to see those fleets or those groups of vehicles as distributed energy resource. There are already a lot of requirements from utilities that apply to solar farms, wind farms, and what we've done is we've translated that to charging stations and have added to OCPP the messages that you would need to adhere to these requirements from grid operators, DR control. We've made sure that we cover the requirements from utilities in North America, Europe, Asia, because OCPP is used in a lot of places. And we are confident that particularly the V2X and the DR control will suffice everywhere, when you, whether you use ISO-20, whether you use CHAdeMO, whether you're working with utilities in North America or in Japan or in Europe. We think we cover everything, we think. So this is where you come in. So maybe you will start using OCPV 2.1. Maybe you review the draft. Please give us your feedback. So we think we've covered everything. We think it should all work. 
but the, but the proof of the pudding is of course in the eating. We won't know until many of you have tried it out. If we've covered everything extensively and if it's all uh, clear. I know that in the back there is a demonstration where already this has been implemented. So hopefully if they found some uh, uh, issues with the specification we have now, uh, hopefully they will alert us so we can improve. As I mentioned, the 2.1, it is a draft and we still have a couple of months before we finally publish. If you want to wait for the final published version, we expect somewhere in January that it should be uh, uh, finalized and then uh, yeah, hopefully it will cover everything that the industry needs at this point in time. Of course, this won't be the end. Maybe in the next few years we'll come to across new requirements and then we'll just add them and update the protocol uh, once again. I already briefly explained this. So this is the distributed energy resource. Maybe you're not thinking about this yet. Maybe you are. Uh, and then you know that it's quite a complex topic. So please read 2.1 and give us your feedback. Battery swapping, again, if you don't use it, you can forget about it. And I already mentioned uh, this 60-day uh, public review. So please share. If you're not an OCM member, you want to give us feedback, please share. There's one other thing that I'd like to talk to you about, because so far I've explained 2.1, and you see it's more and more and more. We keep adding more features, V2X, battery swapping, uh, uh, displays, uh, payment terminals. So this is a trend that of course makes sense if you operate out of the Netherlands or out of Germany. But across the planet there is much more electrification going on, and that's why we've, in parallel to this trend to add more and more features to OCPP. We have also this development about light and I will explain to you what the idea is behind OCPP light and where it stems from. So OCPP is one protocol and you can use it on home chargers, uh, fast chargers, public chargers, uh, fixed cables. So all the options that are available you can all use OCPP on. OCPP has a lot of options so there's a lot of things you can leave out if you don't use it. Um, but this is quite tricky because not everywhere across the world the development is going at the exact same pace or direction. Um, so in the OCPP protocol there are already mechanisms in place that allow you to work with uh, the products that you want and that you're not burdened with all the other features that are included. So the three mechanisms in OCPP that are in place are the profiles, I mentioned this again. You have a core profile and on top you have all the other profiles. And you can pick and choose whichever you need. So you always have to implement a core. Everybody needs to implement a core. But on top of that you can say, okay, my charging infrastructure only needs core and smart charging. Or I only need core and uh, ISO 15118. So that's the first mechanism where you can pick and choose what you need. The second mechanism is even if you look at core, there are a lot of options in core. So if you don't want them, you don't need them, you can all uh, disable them. And then actually the part of OCBP 201 that you need to implement is quite limited. It's very, a very small part, but it's still OCBP 201 and it's still compatible with 201 back offices. So that's something that's important to look at, although OCBP 201 may look very big. Uh, in essence, the mandatory part is, uh, is quite small actually. And lastly, uh, we have several product types. If you want to go to certification, you can not only certify a charging station, but we are also looking at, for instance, a light charging station, and I will come back to that. So what is a light charging station? And where does this notion of OCBP light come from? So very simply, um, if you look at the market for light electric vehicles, two-wheelers and three-wheelers, um, in Europe it is a market, but it's not as big as the, the per passenger cars or trucks or whatever. But if you go to Southeast Asia or you go to India, this is the main mode of transportation. Most people drive uh, a bike, a motorbike or a tuk-tuk. And they are also electrifying, but the price points of those vehicles is quite low. So they also need an affordable charging station. Um, and they have given us feedback saying, okay, we work with affordable charging stations with uh, uh, low resources, so we don't have a lot of space. And OCPP is quite big, so it doesn't fit. So can you work for towards a lighter implementation so we can also include OCPP in these affordable, smaller, cheaper charging stations? Okay, so we are an industry association, so we say, of course, okay, let's look into that. So we've started a task group, we meet every three weeks, and basically what we've done is 
try to identify, okay, what resources are we talking about? Um, is it the memory? Is it the data communication? Uh, is it the firmware itself? So, so yeah, what, what, is the, what is the issue that we need to discuss? And we've started discussing, okay, so where can we optimize? And also importantly, what do we already have? So in 201, uh, how light is 201? And what can we do more? So how can we make it more uh, uh, low resource, that has low resource impact? So um, I already mentioned, uh, if you look at 201, the mandatory part is already quite basic. Then you have all your authorization and transactions all working. And we are quantifying the impact on CPU, on uh, RAM, ROM, flash, and the data communication. And the great thing is that we have a reference implementation coded in C++, and we're actually doing the measurements there. So we are measuring the uh, impact on RAM, ROM, flash per functional block. So you can quantify, okay, this is how much ISO 5118 takes, takes resources. This is the core. So you can actually identify, so which are the heavy parts and which are not so heavy, so they don't eat up too much of your resources. For this, of course, we need imp uh, input from people who are working with light implementations, because we can throw a lot of things out from the perspective of the people that are active in the technology working groups. Okay, you don't need this, you don't need this. You probably don't need that, but we need input from the market. If you're developing a lightweight OSPB implementation, which parts do you really need to keep? And for instance, we've had a discussion about persistent storage. Uh, can you do without? Uh, that's something that yeah, I think the industry should give us give a feedback on. So the result of this light task group is definitely a white paper and reference data on how much resources OSPP 201 will need. And of course, with the 2.1, we'll also add, okay, how much more resources would you need for the OSPP perspective to add V2X? And then if there definitely is a need to have a more lightweight OCPP implementation, we can consider having a certificate for OCPP Lite. So when you purchase a charging station, you, uh, you can see, okay, this is a regular charging station uh, and this is a light charging station. So some features are dropped because of resource constraint. So this was the, uh, uh, and, and I think it's important to stress that both developments are happening at the same time. So at the same time, we're morphing towards light and at the same time, we're advancing to 2.1. So it's not one or the other. It's just something that's happening in the industry today uh, at the same point in time. And they're both uh, very valid and very valuable for uh, the job we all want to achieve, which is uh, yeah, EV driving uh, everywhere. So this is my uh, the presentation, what I wanted to share with you so far. I hope I've made it clear that uh, if you like to join the Open Charge Alliance, of course, we hope you do. Uh, that will be most valuable to us. You don't have to, you can also always uh, 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 not join, but if you want to join, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Lonike. So now is the time to ask questions. Your presentation definitely attracted many, many listeners. So if you have any thoughts, if you have questions, now is the time. Just raise your hand and I will bring the mic to you. Any questions? Yeah, uh, Claudio from Rydergy, I wanted to ask, what's the um, development of OCPP you see worldwide and, and what version do they have implemented depending on the region? Okay, yeah, thank you. So the question is, which version do people use? So most use 1.6, I think almost everybody. And it works great because it covers transactions and the management of the charging station, so it's really useful. We do see that in many regions there is already an uptake of plug and charge or of payment terminals and many companies have added that in their own way. So I do think that what's in use in the industry is 1.6 plus a lot of additional uh, features. Um, if you look at software versions, I think what we've tried to do is on the 2.0.1 and 2.1, we've incorporated everything in the specification itself. Um, and I think that for many companies, it's a bit of a jump to leave what they already have and what's already working 
to uh, jump to a new whole new OCPP version. Uh, I hope at some point that they will consider putting in the effort. Uh, we see the first 201 certified charging stations and back offices out there. Uh, so it's gradually becoming a, a, a part of the industry, but there's still a long way to go. And that's also why I addressed the slides. You can code it yourself, but you can also buy a stack or you can get open source. So uh, I do hope that more companies will decide to jump on the next version of OCPP 2.0.1, 2.1, because yeah, it just offers more what you need today in a standardized way. Hello, yeah, I have a question it's more on the technical side. On the OCPP 1.6, I thought there's already energy uh, measured in both ways, but I'm not 100% sure if it's true. So I thought it's possible to use bidirectional charging inside OCPP 1.6. Well, the good thing about OCPP is you can do anything with it. So you can just use it and change it. So that's free for you to do. So you can get it working, of course, with 1.6. The thing is what we do is that we publish the specification in detail and if you, the published specification doesn't explicitly state how you can do that with uh, 1.6. So I think you can, also, you know OCP is not rocket science so you can already do a lot with it. But I do think it's important to say is with the, the grid control function, that's something that utilities more and more uh, start to require. So I think that having bidirectional energy transfer that's okay, but I do think it's important to prepare for the requirements of utilities because in the end, yeah, they have this, uh, yeah, it's important to them. Hello, uh, Piotr from Solid Studio. I have a question about one aspect of OCPP, which is uh, how to get the public key uh, for sign-meter values. I think it's missing in OCP 1.6, 2.01. Uh, there are some white papers in prepare, preparing, so I have a question if this is something they are going to put into the standard. Um, thank you for your question. As soon as you start uh, public keys, and that becomes a qu quite a bit tricky. So maybe if you don't mind, so we have a tech table and uh, we have two hours. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that in two hours we'll be able to come up with a satisfying answer for you, uh, if that's okay. Hi, no, non-technical question. So, <laughs> uh, you mentioned OCP 1.6 is the most spread protocol nowadays. So, uh, OCP 201 is start to being adopted. So, what are the main challenges and hurdles you see on the way to adopt 201? No, sorry, 2.1. Learning the lessons from OCP 1.6 to 201, etc. Yeah, so Thanks. thank you. So, the, the, you're, you're so right. So, the, the biggest, most important decision we made was backwards compatibility. So 1.6 was an extension of 1.5, was an extension of 1.2. So it was based on the first ideas of OCPP. And for 201, we decided we needed to make a big improvement and we did, but there was a breaking change, big breaking change. So 201 is quite different from 1.6 in the way it works. So that has been a massive hurdle for everybody to move to 201. So that's why we decided 2.1 is backwards compatible with 201, so to eliminate that big jump. So that's one point that we've made sure. And the second part, part is what we see with 201 is we have a testing tool and we see a lot of companies who are coding and they test against the tool and it really helps them to, uh, yeah, to within their development. So we had the testing tool with the test cases for 201 almost four years after publication of 201. So what we're doing now is we publish 2.1, uh, say in January, and quite shortly after that, we want to provide already the draft test cases for 2.1 in the tool. So hopefully having a tool to test against will uh, help in, uh, in your development. And lastly, of course, the open source. Uh, we are, there's op there already, the open source community is already trying to develop 2.1, also based on the draft. So maybe having some open source code also helps everybody to get started more quickly. And it's an important point. We shouldn't wait, and again, four years before we uh, uh, provide all those uh, things to the industry. Thank you.
Uh, related question, would you recommend to skip uh, 201 altogether and move straight to 2.1 or is it too early to tell? Um, I think what is good to start with 201 because yeah, if you look at the presentation, most a lot of it is the same. I think it also depends on what you want. So if you want to go for payment terminals, dash 20, then you could go immediately to 2.1. It sort of depends a little bit on what you uh, what you want to use it for. I would, d d though, uh, advise not to start with 1.6 today. There are still companies that are starting with 1.6 today. And then I think, well, maybe it's better to start with 201 because you can already reduce the scope of 201 quite uh, drastically. So. Mm. Okay, thank you. Hi, Niklas from Avalon Solutions. A very related question. Um, so we haven't seen a big adoption of uh, 201, especially on the OEM side um, for now. So what is your expectation? Will there be a mass adoption of like 2.x with 2.1 then? Or will the industry first adopt 201? Because <laughs> we haven't seen a big move to that. I don't towards know. That. I don't know. So what we try to do is listen what the industry needs and we put it in and then what people uh, want to do in the end. Yeah, I, I, I wish I knew, but I, don't, I just don't know. We just, everything's there and they can use it and then, uh, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Guillermo from Vattenfall. I just want to ask if there is any attempt or try to standardize OCPP. I know that in the past OCA is trying to put some, some standards in order to make more clear the rules of how to use this, this communication. I don't know if 2.1 is part of the plan. On Do you mean formal standardization? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. So OCPP is uh, not a standard, uh, an ISO standard or an IC standard, IEEE, SAE. You have many organizations that develop standards uh, for many different industries. OCA just has one standard, OCPP. Um, and we are currently, but and, uh, apparently in many industries that's really important. So what we've done, we've agreed with IEC to go for fast track adoption. So currently there is a vote ongoing where national committees inside TC69, which is a specific technical committee inside IEC, can vote on OCPP 201 edition 3 uh, for fast track approval, so yes or no. And if a sufficient number of countries vote yes, then OCPP 201 edition 3 will be published as an IEC standard. So then we can say, and the number is, 63584 so please remember <laughs> but it's not a done deal yet so voting is ongoing and i hope that enough countries uh, will vote yes and then ospb is also an iec standard <laughs>